have Brian McGuffin. It's the second time, maybe even the third that we, that we speak, right, Brian? Yeah, we, we seem to always get on a pretty good conversation, man. So glad to be jumping on again with you. And uh, on a personal note, you're one of the many who left California. I am. It seems to be a mass exodus these days. But yet my wife and baby and I took off recently and we, we went over to Idaho. So we're uh, checking out of here, a little more space for the baby and a little more, uh, a little more peace and quiet. I love California, but just, just a little something different. So. And today, since we're on December, we wanted to talk about things that businesses should think about and really need to do now in December as we're going to the new year, 2021. So what are those three things? What's the first thing? The first thing I want to cover is taxes. I think that's the most important thing that it's always on business owners' minds, right? Everybody's always thinking about taxes. How can I pay less taxes? Am I paying more? But in reality, business owners do very little to control their tax situation. But here's why. The typical model is you wait until the end of the year to bring your books and records to your CPA. You wait until the end of the year and pay your taxes on April 15th. But what that doesn't allow is any time during the year for you to actually do any tax planning or make any corrections for the year. So what I'm an advocate of is meeting definitely at least before the year end, but on a quarterly basis is better. But I would say the biggest thing in December is meet with your CPA, have them look at your books, have them look at your books, go through the taxes because there's a lot of tax strategies that can be implemented before December 31st that could have a lot of tax benefits for you to reduce your tax bill. So what that does is, alleviate you from getting this huge tax bill on April 15th, but you were actually able to take advantage of some tax strategies in the prior year. So that's the first thing I start with. Taxes are, are huge. Yeah, I think that, wow, that's perfect. And a perfect that you pinpoint the fact that people wait and wait and wait. And they think they, oh no, it's just uh, I'll give everything to the CPA. And all of a sudden, you know, oh, surprise, surprise, surprises. Yeah. Always happen in business. There are surprises that you can plan and just delete. What would be the second thing? I would say the second thing is forecasting and budgeting. So that's a huge tool that business owners can use. And especially nowadays with automation and the amount of data we can collect through an accounting system like QuickBooks, for example, that's a great accounting program that a lot of business, small to medium sized businesses use. Well, just even out of that program alone, you can do a lot of forecasting and budgeting. And I think a lot of business owners shy away from that because it sounds like a crazy finance term and it sounds super complicated, but really all we're talking about is setting a base year. So now that we're about to finish, let's put this in perspective, we're about to finish 2020. So now we have this entire year's worth of data, right? We know exactly how much money we made. We know how much income we had. We know what we spent our expenses on. We know what our net income was. So at a very minimum, we have a base year that we can use as a budget and a forecast. So at the very minimum, what I would tell business owners is, hey, let's look at 2020 as the main, as the, the minimum baseline. And we're going to forecast and budget that we're going to at least do better than this. Okay. That's what I would say at a minimum level. But if you want to take that to a more advanced level, you should break that down on a monthly basis. So we can look at your income statement, your profit and loss on a monthly basis and say, this is how I performed in January. This is how I performed in February, March, so on, so on, so on. And now those becomes our new base year for 2021. Now in 2021, each month, we're trying to progress and do better. So we're going to set certain KPIs, whether it's, okay, we need 100 more sales a month, or we need X amount more in revenue a month than we did in January of 2020. But at least now we have a baseline, a base period, some base data where we can start to set some goals. Because I think what happens is without forecasting and budgeting, and you know how this goes. I do, I'm guilty of it too, and, and this is my profession, but sometimes we just run around in limbo, just, just there's so much going on, and we're like, oh, okay, you know, I'm servicing, and I'm servicing, and, and you know, doing this, putting out fires here, that we, we forget to plan and put goals in place, but that's the main benefactor of, of forecasting and budgeting is that it allows you to look at your actual numbers and then, and then dream, right? We're dreamers. So let's, let's put some, some numbers out there that we can, we can try to achieve that are higher than what we did this year. And let's set some goals, but that's the huge benefit of forecasting and budgeting. And I push it all the time with business owners because it's, it's, it works and, and it helps you set some goals and, and hit them. 
And you would probably say that, again, if you're the CEO or the owner and you don't have that time, but you do have someone that can do that for you and then you sit with them on those numbers and do the forecasting uh, and budgeting with them, but you have exactly. to do that. Yep, a hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. And 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 you're right. It's not a lot of things that business owners want to do and sit down themselves. So accounting and finance isn't the funnest thing. But but I would highly recommend sitting with your CPA, sitting with somebody that knows about it, and doing it. Yeah, because what what it is, it's a very detailed, in depth conversation with the business owner. Not only old of just of the numbers, but getting a true insight of how the business works, how it operates, how they make money, where they spend their expenses. So that way you can build a true story, a true narrative, and try to make some good corrective changes for 2021. And once you have all that numbers and you can forecast, you can start drill down to other departments. You can start drill down to sales and marketing and say, okay, that's the KPIs. That's where we want to go. Now, how are we going to get there? what kind of marketing and now i know what our marketing expenses so what kind of marketing are we going to do are we going to just do the same thing as this year are we going to have a bigger uh, marketing budget a smaller marketing budget if that's the budget so what are the, our marketing avenues um and so on and so forth so everything is much clearer and when you have a plan yeah everything is easier or at least there's you know there's base there's the the first floor is ready so now you can continue build on it which brings me to return on investment yep that's number three right correct that is number three roi and and that's what what we just talked about is drilling in deeper so once you have this data available once you have something to look at and i know you and i talk about this all the time but in this this age of information data is key and, and once we have the data then we can make better and more informed and effective decisions as business owners but that's what drilling down into those marketing uh, kpis and metrics allows you to do is you can start to set those plans and i think that that so number three talking about number three roi is how do you look back at your year how do you look back at your branding efforts your marketing efforts and this is what i want to get your perspective on because i know that you're going to have a good answer for it but how how do you look back at those efforts and look at the roi what worked what didn't work how can we plan for 2021 based off our 2020 results on our marketing efforts and our campaigns you know i think we really need to look at the roi that we got and sure sometimes it doesn't work, right? And you and I talk about this all the time. It's testing and testing and testing, but people always look at marketing as an expense. And and I think that I'm guilty of it too. You know, when, when I first got into business, it's like, okay, you don't want to put money into marketing because it's have to test and test and test. And I think that's what shies business owners away is that sometimes they don't see that immediate ROI for marketing, but that there, there, is, there is an ROI oftentimes, even if it's just testing and having something not work because now you know that that doesn't work. So not to go completely off tangent, but I, I, I'd like to know what you think about, about that and, and, and ROI on marketing. I mean, I, I, I use that as a plan and a tactic to, to plan for, for my clients moving into 2021 to adjust and, and redo things. But so what do you do for your clients on, on kind of year end when you're looking at marketing campaigns and, and things to move forward with? That's a great question. And uh, it's funny, I just, I have a new client and uh, she, she's in soft launch right now. And we we're just talking about marketing and campaigns. And I told her, listen, uh, this campaign, now that you're starting and there's really no traffic to the website, no sales, you just in pre-launch kind of, but we need to start drive the traffic. And what usually happens is that the clients expect an immediate ROI on their campaigns. Oh, I will put X amount of money and I will get X plus 30%. Usually they, they think it's much more, but it's not. And I told her, don't expect anything from this campaign. Mm -hmm. And let me explain. So when you start, you need to invest money in order to get long-term results. Let's say you put $1,000 into a Google campaign or a Facebook campaign. 
you would probably won't get that money back right now from this campaign, but you will get new clients and new traffic that you can then use on a long-term campaigns to start sending them retention emails. That's where you're going to start and get the money back. I go over the marketing matrix every month. I don't like to wait. I like to adjust every month and I look at all the numbers every month because I like to just see things go up because things don't always go up. Things will not go up forever. So you mm -hmm. really need to be on top of it yeah. and have no expectations. And you need to remember that in this day and age, whatever you're selling or offering, there are many others that do the same and others that do marketing at least as good as you and probably some really big ones that put so much more money in their campaigns. So you need to be really, really smart and think ahead. Know that the ROI is in the long term. Mm -hmm. and you need to have ROI, just like you said, on branding and ROI on conversion. Those are pretty much two different things. Conversions uh, and sales is really easy. You know, it's black and white. You can see the numbers. In order to understand if your branding works, that's where you start and connect and have surveys with your customers. Mm -hmm. Always ask your customers why did you buy what make you buy this and not the competition uh what was it how do you feel about it mm -hmm. yeah how did you know about us um, how many times do you come to the website how many times do you do you talk to your friends about it all of those things that are more intangible and there are always two kind of customers that you need to ask those questions. You have two tiers of customers. You have the really big customers that, you know, that's the 20% that gives you most, most of the money. And mm -hmm. you need to understand how they think, what their reasons are, and how does it work with the rest of your customers and see if there's correlation or not. You, you mentioned branding on there and that's kind of the, the mysterious one. Cause like you said, it's more of the intangible. So I think that, I mean, certain myself too, it's like, how do you quantify that and how do you measure the ROI? But it's exactly what you said is talking to the people because that's what the intangible is at the end of the day. It's the buzz about you and your business and, and it's what the people are saying. Right. So that's a great point. And, and I think that that's something that everybody could use in their business more. And I'm, I'm going to do that now that we're talking, I'm going to do that in December. I'm going to send out some surveys before the year end. So it's one of the things that will help you the most is to ask the people. Now, do you have any softwares or apps or services that you recommend business owners to use? Yeah. I mean, there's a ton of, ton of plugins and ton of tools available, but for, for accounting and, 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 and the accounting work, I definitely recommend QuickBooks. It's a simple, easy software. Uh, you can use it, whether you're a business running a hundred thousand, 50 million, it, it doesn't matter. So it, it has the capability to run a small to medium sized business. It's really great. They plug in with all the tools. So uh, another thing that business owners struggle with big time is invoicing. So there's all sorts of great tools out there like uh, HubDoc or other proposal systems like practice ignition. There's some really great ones that all plug into QuickBooks and just make life easier for a business owner with automation. You know, I kind of touched on that earlier, but automation is key. And there's, there's a certain extent we can automate, right? We can only automate to a certain extent. We still need to be involved as a business owner, but I would say that business owners struggling with their, with their accounting and finance, look at the tools that are available inside of QuickBooks because a lot of them help business owners run more seamlessly, more automated, but still having that control and oversight that they need to have as a business owner. Brian, thanks again. It's, uh, it was a pleasure as always. Learned a lot. Yeah, likewise, man. Always good catching up. I'm, I'm excited for our next one.